Good evening. This is Chippecon. Thank you for the, to you who have shown up. And uh, as you can see, I've got my tree down. But um, tonight I wanted to talk to people and I was hoping people have called a couple of friends and hope that they join us uh, because there's a lot of people who are actually pretty good at doing the occult stuff, but um, I didn't seem to get anybody who actually is either can do Zoom or, <laughs> or is free tonight. So I may once again be babbling for an hour. I hope not. Do ask if you have any questions. What I'm talking about tonight is practice. The, the old joke, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. Uh, we in modern America, probably because of fiction, uh, are tend to think of our um, of magic as well. This is, and then poof, like magic, it'll go away. Yeah, right. No, magic is not poof. Magic is not the easy way. Magic is one set of tools that humans can use to get things done. Uh, one of the ways I describe this to people is if humans could fly by levitation or some such thing, you can be pretty sure that you would have to expend the same amount of energies it would take you to climb whatever you're going to fly at above the level of the trees say 60 feet up you're going to have to expend the same amount of energy as it would take to climb six flights of stairs and then to walk it's not going to be you're going to somebody is going to be carrying you whatever you do with magic needs to be done with tools and techniques and we have been warped by fiction, not entirely unlike the way we have been warped into thinking, oh, a good looking guy looks like, um, is it Chris something looked in Thor? Uh, or or um, Hugh Jackman looked in Wolverine? Yeah, guess what made them look like that? they were this close to passing out because they were so freaking dehydrated. That's how you get that ripped, muscly look. Our idea of magic is just as fan fantasy as, as that is. We are very, very good as a culture at lying to ourselves. We want it to be easy. It is not easy. It's just a technique. There are ways of, of learning things, there are ways of doing things. Yes, it's relatively easy to, oh, well, for instance, if you want to ask a question and you can pull out your uh, pendulum and say, hello, pendulum, can you tell me if there's going to, if the insurrectionists are going to cause a lot of violence on the 20th? And the thing says, well, no, no, I don't think so. Well, guess what? It depends entirely on things that haven't happened yet. You can ask your pendulum questions. They're very good for little things. I use it a lot for, is this particular brand of vitamins more bioavailable to my body? Will this brand be better for me than this brand, which is $2 less or $2 more? Okay, that's an immediate and it's a very closed um, piece of information. But it, for, for things that have lots and lots of things that are gonna happen between now and then, useless, pretty useless. Uh, backing up. When you uh, start using magic, what you're using is the normal human abilities that we all have to connect with each other and the world on an energetic level. The first things that you need to learn are grounding, centering, shielding. 
and we don't start out being good at that. You have to learn how to do it. Now, admittedly, you can teach someone. It's, it is one of the very first things you do teach uh, somebody who's just coming in. And you, basically, because if you're tossing a lot of energy around and you have a novice there who doesn't know how to ground and center and shield, you're going to throw them off. You're going you're gonna to make them dizzy. You're going to make them disoriented. So the first thing you want to teach them is how to ground and center. And then shielding, very important. Um, one of the things that I keep telling people, an awful lot of what we can do, we don't do because we never think of it. I went to a uh, workshop with a whole bunch of healers in Kauai and they, uh, and I put, I had a tendency, this is Hawaii for goodness sakes. Uh, so I put up my shields as I have learned to do. I'm old, I'm almost 69. This was, you know, I was about 60. But over the years, I have learned to put up shields. Do you know that you can put up shields to keep the bugs from biting you? Drives other people nuts. It's like, why aren't the bugs biting you? It's like, well, because I put shields up. Well, how do I do that? Well, the first step is to uh, Im imagine a shield around you. You can decide any kind of image that works for you. Some people will picture themselves being surrounded by a big uh, glowing gold sphere. Some of the people that I know who are into medievalism picture themselves in armor. Some people will picture, uh, some shielding is more specific and you will picture, for instance, a permeable shield. So good things can come in and bad things don't come out. You don't want to keep everything away. After all, if you are tapping into the energy of the universe, you'd like to be able to tap into the energy of the earth or ley lines or whatever you tap into. Um, if you want to have something that's, that's coming at you, if you believe you're being psychically attacked, you can put a filter on the shield that says, yes, the energy comes in, but anything that is negative that is coming into me will be automatically transformed into something that strengthens me. It is a lot more popular to put up a mirrored shield that will send anything negative back to, the, to wherever it was sent from. I prefer transforming it into something that does me good. Uh, be, because I'm kind of like that and I like the idea of frustrating the heck out of them and they put lot, lots of energy, they throw energy my way and I say, oh, keep it coming guys. The more you send at me, the happier and healthier I'm gonna get. That is really, really, you know, that, that is a uh, satisfying revenge as it were. But uh, so you can put shields up and that is one of the things that you need to do. But the point of tonight's workshop is you have to practice. I did not learn how to turn, you know, turn, scare away bugs. I did not learn how to put up a UV shield. Um, it, I stopped using sunblock 10 or 15 years ago. And then you can probably tell by looking at me, I'm a really pale white person. <laughs> But I put up sunblock. I, I put up a UV screen, and I don't get burned. I once I got uh, once since I've done that, I forgot to put it up, and I got so burned. <laughs> and so I used magic to heal my skin, so that the bad sunburn was gone in a few hours. But I was really, really embarrassed. You need, you need to learn. You need to learn how to do it, and you need to remember to do it. If you don't remember to do it, uh, well, as, as I say, the, the prayer that is not answered is the one that is not made. The spell that you never cast is the one that doesn't work. If you want to use magic to do stuff, you have to actually use the magic. Now, we run into the same problem with magic, especially if you have the sacred view of magic is sacred, 
idiots. You, you should take responsibility. You should make sure that it works in a positive way to make the universe you live in work better. But you still have to practice. Just as Itzhak Perlman on, or Okay, anybody who's a concert pianist or a violinist or a singer, they still practice their scales every day, no matter how good they are. People who do, you know, like Bruce Lee, would practice his basic moves for hours a day because that's how you get and stay good. You need to practice. Most of us at some point in our lives learn, trip over, discover that we have energy and it can do things. Um, I remember one of my first experiences of that was a friend was sitting on the curb and being really, really miserable and, and low energy. And so I put my hand on the back of his head and put what I hoped was positive energy into me. And he shot up like a jack in the box. And so what did you do? I said, I put positive energy in. And he said, it felt like there were fishes swimming in my brain. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I didn't get it quite right. <laughs> Where did I learn most of it? From reading freaking science fiction. From, <laughs> from reading, uh, fantasy books. No, there was not a heck of a lot of information in, you know, the Llewellyn was not big at that time. Um, there weren't a lot of books out there. So we faked it. We, we learned by doing. Thank goodness now there is stuff around. So give, give us the basics. Give us learning how to, to ground, learning how to center. I actually think you should center before you ground. We could have a discussion on that. If anybody has a comment, please uh, uh, do the, um, please, please say something because living for an hour is, is at least embarrassing, but. Well, uh, Mr. on. Yes. Uh, please go into what you were saying about the centering and the grounding. Because as I was taught, they're almost simultaneous acts. Pardon me, say that again? The way I had been taught, they're almost simultaneous. Mm -hmm. So if you're separating them, I'm very curious how you mean. Uh, when I say center, I am usually saying, bring your focus in. Don't have your energy scattered everywhere. You have to focus and, and bring your concentration into yourself. And then, then you can reach out and get your connections to, to the stars, to the earth, to, to whatever. Uh, but first you have to stop scattering your attention. That, that's what I mean when I say centering. Uh, so to me, centering is, is, is stopping letting your attention be scattered over a dozen different things. And then when you've done that, then, 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 I, then I ground. If you are doing that, if you practice it, I went to a workshop at a conference once where they suggested that anyone who worked in the uh, health professions should learn this because then you could run to the ladies room and do some grounding and centering exercises and in, five minutes or three minutes when you get good at it, you could, you could ground yourself and then come back out and be more used to your patients. I was a little surprised because I was coming from a different point of view. And I thought that if it's taking you five minutes or three minutes, it's going to, that's, that takes you a little bit longer. But as I'm trying to say now, You start out taking five minutes. You might start out taking 15. But if you practice it daily, perhaps several times a day, then by the time you have been, you're old and gray and, and a little creaky, 
you'll be able to say, shoot, I am scattered everywhere. Deep breath. And then you're grounded and centered. Uh, one of the techniques that I have often used in the last 20 years is when you sit down to your computer and you tr push the button and you're waiting for it to boot up, that it gives you a good 45 seconds to a minute when there is almost nothing you can do. <laughs> you, are, you're, you, you push the button, you're waiting for the next thing to click on, Great time to practice grounding and centering. If, you, if you've only got one minute, any time you're doing something, if you're on hold, any time when you have an enforced, I'm not doing anything else, ground and center. It's, there are very few things that you don't do better when you are grounded. And uh, so that's, that, is, that is a thing that I, I suggest to people. And you do want to get to the point where you can do it in the amount of time it takes you to take a deep breath or pr preferably better. If we get to the point where we are having the kind of uh, chaotic situation that has, a, that, that we, where you're in danger and you need to call up energy very quickly, you better learn how to do it fast. But even if you, all you're doing is for instance, you're doing Reiki and you're, or any other kind of energy healing. The first thing you do is you get yourself grounded and centered and then you, you, you do the technique for whatever the energy healing, whether it is Reiki, whether it is therapeutic touch, whether it is a quantum touch, whatever. But you always start with, with grounding and centering. So you want to start there and then you can do it. And then as I said, the next thing is, is uh, shielding. You, and, and the way to do this, the shielding is practice. When I first started back in the 80s, uh, my uh, incantation was shields up, Mr. Sulu. <laughs> and I was picturing the little spaceships putting up the Tholian web uh, back from 19... 68 Star Trek because that was a containment system that I had a good image a strong image for I think everybody should pick their personally uh, personally meaningful image to use for their shielding you can use different shields for different purposes, whether it is a mirror, whether it is a screen, whether it is a, in my case, uh, a uh, pressure cooker, in which with I have a I have a I have a uh, pot for making juices that that you that has a little spigot at the bottom, and you put whatever you want in the top, and then you take out what you need the bottom. So that's what I use when I'm transforming something that's being thrown at me. So, but work out what your own symbolism is and develop your technique for doing that. Uh, one large group of practice that we, I think most of us in, in America have heard of is a Qigong and the other forms of martial arts where you are moving energy. I mean, Tai Chi is, is kind of a slowed down martial arts thing where you are learning to make the energy go through you. Uh, the Huna technique of Pono Pono is picturing energy, say, I think most of you would know what I mean if I say breathe in through the top of your head and out through your feet. You're inviting the energy to come in and go out. Uh, in Western ceremonial magic, which I dabbled in in college and then said, no, I'm not particularly interested in this anymore. So I really don't take anything I say with Western ceremonial magic as other than just a, okay, I read a little bit about that. <laughs> 
but the the middle pillar exercise where you are drawing energy up and having it come out and then come around you and surrounding you and coming up it is a way of learning to make the energy happen when you are teaching someone to do energy healing now depending on if you have a system like runewald or reiki or whatever there are techniques but if you are simply telling people about the laying on of hands and guess what humans have this ability you can now practice now you you know the one where you put your hands together and you press them and or sometimes rub them and then you separate them and you can feel the energy between your hands Does everybody here you know if you've got your camera on nod <laughs> If you know that that exercise and then sometimes you make an energy ball and you can feel it the next step or perhaps even the step before shielding is learning to detect feeling energy so that you can feel it when you're doing it so that when you are pushing energy out of your hand you can feel it going when you can feel your energy going from one hand to the other and you can figure out which is better for you do you want your right hand to be your receptive or do you want to be the projective energy um practice until you can feel it and when you can feel it then you can start doing interesting things with it if you're in high school if you're a little idiot uh, you will probably try doing things like staring at the back of somebody's head and seeing if you can make them turn around in class uh, this is a great way to not hear what the teacher is saying <laughs> but it is also a way to begin to learn how to project energy which you can do with your hands you can do it with a wand you can do it through your eyes by gazing at someone you can uh but you can learn lots and lots of different ways of doing it and as i said one of the ways of doing that is to read fiction because people write about magic a lot and what you can do is try what you've read about and see if you can make it work for you and if it works for you do it and if it doesn't work for you try a different technique but once you've gotten something working you got to practice we want it to be easy we want everything to to work for us by magic if you are learning to ride a skateboard or a bicycle if you are learning to uh type at at you know 160 words a minute as opposed to 40 minutes words a minute if you are learning to play the guitar or the piano or whatever you just got to do it over and over and over again until your mother wants you to go and practice in the backyard because just hearing that na 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 like ah, go away i don't want to hear it anymore but that's how you get good similarly you need to do the same thing if you're working with energy one of the people that i uh went to her classes when she was around was Marsha Pickens who was uh she teaches uh magical self defense and she teaches physical self defense and her point of view was that as she had noticed with the people that she taught self defense classes um the ones who were lazy would never do the exercises they would never get up and spend an hour a day doing the freaking exercises and they never got any good so her feeling was similarly you don't need to uh say no you can't teach they there's i've heard the term that says that if the, the witch that cannot hex cannot heal I am not entirely certain that's true because I think the choice of hexing or healing is kind of a personality thing it's it's what's your intent and if your intent if you never want to really hurt somebody then you're not 
liable to try and find out and get good at it, are you? But if you are working at using energy, then that is your thing that you will get better when you are, uh, when you practice. In another analogy, as an artist, I always hated doing practice pieces. I, heck, you had to lay out the whatever bucks it was for the canvas, and you had to lay out the money for the paint, and you had to, I, I don't know about you, but I always destroyed my paint brushes, and I had to buy new paint brushes. And it really bugged me that I would be doing something that I never intended to display. I never intended to do anything except maybe covered up with another low, layer of gesso and try another practice painting on it. But the only way to get good is to do it over and over again. And you will do it over and over again. And sometimes it'll come out good and sometimes it'll come out bad. And if you look back to what you were doing last year, you discover, oh, I, I, I guess I have gotten better because you can't tell from one day to the next that you're getting better. You can only tell after a while. He's like, well, you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't take me that long as as long as it did ten years ago to ground and center. It, I I am better at doing this artistic thing. I am better at doing whatever it is. So that's the important part. Is it, you have to practice. Oh, so hmm? was that a question? I was going to wait for you to finish that thought but then it was what you're talking about reminding me of visualizing and imaging and I was wondering how much that plays a part in the grounding the centering the the raising energy as well because you mentioned specifically Star Trek and yeah I've got my own kind of you know pop culture image in my own head about that exact kind of thing and I was just like I just realized we we're both talking about uh, focusing on an image to make mm -hmm. this happen and of course when I center and ground I'm also focusing on an image I just didn't know if visual excuse me, visualizing or imaging in your mind, like you're saying with your art, because you would have to get the picture of what you wanted to make in your head first. And so how that applies to practice both in that physical context and in a magical context. Mm -hmm. If that made sense. It, it totally makes sense. We have to remember that we can do this without visual. You can you can learn other things. Some people will gravitate to something that is more auditory and some people one of the strangest things I discovered was that yes you can have it's just as you can have be clairvoyant or clairaudient you can have clair well they call it often sentient that that you can get uh smells that be that are uh that that are what you focus on so when you are learning to use energy you are learning to feel different things with you you've got to learn to feel the energy at the same time when my my father was a salesman and he sold those wretched plastic bags that that grocery stores use but he he learned to be able to feel and tell you whether it was one mil thick or one and a half mil thick or two mils thick just by touching it the more you do something the better you get and human skin is really really sensitive <coughs> we we can detect something so when you are feeling and this is a form of what i would call dowsing is if you want to, to if you ran your hand over somebody's body and then you felt something and it's like i don't know the energy is different right there it's like I am feeling something hard there, or I'm feeling something blue there, or I'm feeling something tingled. And it's, oh yeah, that's where I, I, I broke my arm when I was younger. Learning to, to detect the energy allows you to get that just as if you are switching gears again, uh, learning a divination system. And I'm once again, I'm going to go back to my old analogy that divination is not significantly different than meteorology, uh, medical diagnosis. Uh, you're learning to interpret 
that if I see this, that means this is most likely to happen. That's what divination is. And whether you're using tarot cards or the lines on the hand or astrology, part of it, you're going to have psychic impressions that are going to help. But the first things are going to be those signs and symptoms, those things that you've learned to say, well, if this low front is coming in across here, then that means that it's going to be pushed. And there's another one coming from that direction. I know what's going to happen with the weather next. Similarly, you can learn to read cards. You can learn to interpret a chart. You can learn to understand the uh, what different things mean. I am eclectic. I want to learn them all and see how they interact. I believe that learning numerology allows you to understand how the numbers interact in other systems, whether it is using it in astrology or whether it is using it in, in cards. If you learn, you know, the energy of one is initiative, the, the energy of two is balancing, the energy of five is, is motion, the energy of, of four is stability. These things are kind of built into the physics, or in this case, metaphysics of the planet. And it gives you one more thing to build on, one, one more piece in the puzzle. Uh, so, but I try to explain to people, you can use your psychic abilities. You can tap into the connections we have with each other. If you have the ability to touch somebody's hand and pick up emanations from them and you get feelings that will allow you to tell them something about what's going on in their your energy field touches their energy field and suddenly you you've got some in, information however if you are doing most forms of divination it's 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 a simple you have to learn this and that's what i'm bringing trying to get back to you have to freaking learn what the names of the lines on the palm are you have to learn the 36 cards in Lenormand, you have to learn the uh, 72 cards in tarot. You have to find know whether the three of, uh, uh, of pentacles means something different than the eight of pentacles, because both of them are somebody working on pentacles. And, and this is confusing when you're starting out, but you, you do it. And how do you do it? practice you've got to do it over and over when i started reading tarot cards back in the 60s it was oh no you never read for yourself bullshit everybody i know reads for themselves you get your best readings you get your worst readings too because we all have the capacity to lie to ourselves but if you're going to be doing daily readings you have to read for yourself. The same reason that so many artists do self-portraits is because otherwise you have to get your girlfriend or you have to pay a model to paint them. Or, and you can see Rembrandt, he's always doing pictures of his family. Yeah, because they'll sit still for, for, for uh, free. Otherwise you get your mirror and then you can paint yourself. So do your readings and in order to combat the natural tendency humans have of predicting what they want to hear, write it down. Get yourself, you know, consider it, act like it's schooling. You're trying to learn something. Write down the, um, what, what your, your reading was. These are the cards I read. This is how I interpreted it. Make it part of your practice to so come back in a month or a year and go back and look at those readings and say, ah, right, yeah, that's not what happened. And by comparing what you, how you interpreted it before and how it actually came out, you can say, ah, that was because there were influences that were in flux. If you are reading tarot cards 
and you get a whole lot of the major arcana, you if you've got a 10 card reading and over five of the cards are, uh, are major arcana, you say, okay, guys, hold on. You are not in control of the situation. If it's mostly, uh, it's, if, if it's mostly the, the pip cards, then you can say, okay, fine, this is going. Not, as I said, I've, I've just gotten into the Lenormand cards last summer and they're great because they use the symbolism of American, not American, uh, European folk tales. So when you say snake or when you say fox or bear, there's a whole pile of stuff that comes with that, that, that tells you, um, that, that gives you a, it, 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 we've got this in our background. So um, that makes it in many ways easier. Uh, whereas the symbolism in the tarot is more attuned to the Western ceremonial magic and therefore it's not quite as automatic. I'm going to divert once again to another magical practice and that's ritual and beg you to, if you are participating in a ritual, if you are designing a ritual, learn the freaking words, not just speak up so that the people who are attending the rituals can hear you, but learn the words so that you are not reading it off a slip of paper. A, the, uh, you may not have enough light, and B, it's just gonna work better. You will have to memorize. Gee, my heart bleeds. Learn how to memorize, take long enough. If you're doing the ritual, don't hand the words to somebody five minutes before the freaking ritual. Give it to them earlier so that you can, uh, so they have a chance to read it. Okay, that's my diatribe for tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, but but if you have been to any rituals where people were reading their uh, little, their, whatever the words were that were supposed to be expressing some brilliant spiritual wisdom, for goodness sakes, speak up and learn the words. That it's not supposed to be impossible but it we do expect you to put in the work it's not any different than using any other tool a tool makes it work better did you ever try and drive a nail in in the wall with the with the foot of your shoe or or they uh, or or some tool other than a hammer yeah you have the right tool it will work better but, and <laughs> if you practice, how many of you have not done a whole lot of carpentry and you miss the, the um, nail more often, unless of course you're talking about your thumbnail. <laughs> it, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And the better you get at it, the easier it gets. But the easy part comes when you have learned the physical, and the mental technique. Can you imagine, a lot of you are older, I can see your gray hairs. That means you probably were forced to learn math facts when you were in school and you had to learn the, the, your plus and your minus tables in first grade and second grade, the, you, you got into the multiplication and by the time you were in fourth grade, you could divide the, you, know, you, you knew that seven times eight is 56, and that was just there. If you go to the grocery store now, the kids are using the cash register and it tells them how much your change is. And if God forbid that's not working, they can't freaking make change. It is, yes, it's a pain in the tush. I hated learning it when I was a kid. I hated it worse when I was drilling my own kids. The same way with magic. You have to learn the basics. You have to learn what the different 
things are that you're, you're, you, you have to learn the difference. What are the characteristics of, of Apollo or Jupiter or Saturn or Venus or Mercury? You have to learn the characteristics of one, two, three, four. You have to learn the difference between an ascendant and a rising sign. You have to learn what is what you can learn from a uh, a person's moon and what you ha have to, whatever it is you're learning, and you can learn them one at a time. Trust me, you've got decades. You can learn all kinds of stuff one at a time. You get a little bit crazier when you're learning things, trying to learn everything at once. <laughs> focus, just the same as when you're grounding and centering. If you focus and you do one thing at a time, you do better. But yes, you may have to drill. But when you have memorized it, then you can take off. Then it's like, oh, I can see what the connection is between this and that. I can see how these things connect. It makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna pause again. I rarely pause, but if you have any questions, anybody? Well, that's a really simple one, especially when you're speaking about such large systems as palmistry, astronomy, or astrology, and tarot. Mm -hmm. Do you have like any helpful hints? I mean, because there's such a massive amount of information. Uh, there is, there is. And oddly enough, it comes back to a similar thing, practice. If you want to learn tarot, you have to do readings. If you want to learn astrology, you have to make charts and interpret them. If you want to learn to ride a skateboard or play the violin, you're gonna fall down and skin your knees. You're going to drive everybody in the neighborhood nuts as they listen to you practice. You're not going to be good at first, but if you don't practice, you'll never get better. You have to do it over and over. And as I was saying with the, the painting, you hate to waste it. I always worried about, well, if this is this deep sacred energy, it seems sacrilegious in some way to use it for something trivial. Except no, if you use it for the trivial things, if you use it to make the weather better, just okay, I, I, please hold off on the rain for the next half hour until I get home. If you use it to, I mean, okay, if, when the phone rings, you begin to see wait a minute i'm getting it more and more uh, uh, right you yeah i didn't mean to interrupt but uh you lagged out completely after you said the words the phone rang ah yes uh, and and i had a thing flash across my thing saying your connection is unstable <laughs> it's like uh, yeah well chippecon's a little unstable yeah if you practice that as i said build little bits into your life, like grounding and centering while your computer uh, boots up, Why, like trying to figure out who's on the other side of the phone line before you pick it up. Are they going to hang up if you answer the third ring instead of the second? Probably not. And if they are, the chances are it isn't your best friend saying he's gonna kill himself. It's probably a telemarketer, so. Build into your life chances to start expanding your psychic abilities. Humans are psychic. That's just our default position. There are, as with sports, as with music, as with almost anything else, their talent. There are people who just naturally it's easier for Okay, you can have a theory, allow me to suggest the theory 
that perhaps if you someone is naturally talented at something, it's because they practiced the heck out of it in a previous lifetime, and therefore they're that kind of carried forward into this lifetime, and that's why they're they're able to do it now. But if you want to get good at stuff, you have to do it over and over, and which means use it on the trivial stuff. Use it on the little stuff. And when you start doing it over and over, you get better at it. So it's like muscle memory, only you've got aura memory. You will learn to do to use the energy body that you have to do the things that you want to do with it because you've been practicing. And if you don't practice, then you will continue to be a talented amateur for a very long time. Um, and yes, you're gonna make mistakes. And all you can do is just say, oops, uh, even today, if I am reading, well, not today, but last year, <laughs> if I am reading cards, or reading palms or whatever, but if I am doing fortune telling in public, I keep my copy of Eden Gray with me because every so often a card will come up and the other person, you and the other person will be trying to figure out how does this fit in the reading? And then I pull out the book and I say, look, I would much rather have you have a good reading than to have me look terribly clever. And I open it up and I read in like the fourth or fifth or sixth thing in there often is, oh, that's exactly what's going on in this situation. But because I hadn't encountered it very often, I hadn't memorized it. So it wasn't in the options that I was able to tell them about. And most people are quite grateful at the idea that you would, you're not trying to look smart after all, you're a stranger, you're, they're probably never gonna see you again, who cares? But they, they, if you, you just give them a good reading, they can take it home and, and, have their, and improve their life. There's no real reason, there's, hey, there's two reasons to go, to go to a fortune teller. One is because you want to find something that you can't figure out by Googling it or by looking it up in a library or whatever, but, the other reason is to prove whether or not this stuff works. Proving whether this, this stuff works or not is stupid. I like, are you trying to convince yourself or are you trying to convince yourself it doesn't work? It, this, is, this is not the important part. The important part is how to get a good reading so that you can help in, and empower the other person so they can make their lives better. That's what it's there for because you know why are we why why is there a doc why do you go to a doctor for diagnosis so that you know the right way to treat whatever is going on going wrong with your body so that it stops going wrong if you you, you check the weather because you want to know whether to care you know how much clothes to wear or where carry an umbrella it's there it may not be able to change the change the overall pattern, but you can learn how to work in the pattern in a way that makes your life better. So that's that's what divination is all about. And if you're going to be practicing, do it all the time. Just take yourself 15 minutes a day and do a reading. You know, if you didn't know this, most fairs and psychic things, it, readings are about 15 minutes. Uh, so you can find 15 minutes to do one reading in whatever the system is, and maybe at some point you're gonna do, you're gonna get um, bored. And if you're like me, then you say, okay, I'm going to do a reading and in, in, uh, I'm gonna do a tarot reading Mondays and I'm gonna do a palm reading Tuesdays and I'm gonna do a uh, uh, t uh, Egyptian hieroglyph thing that I've got, I've got a wonderful little, I, I will buy almost any divination system out there <laughs> because I like them. They're pretty and I can play with them. Uh, and if, but one of those things that they're all doing in your head is they are opening the channels. They're 
getting the energy working in a way that is going to make you a better channel for the energy that you, you're looking for. The more you heal, if when you go onto Facebook or whatever social system you use, somebody says, so my, my, my dog is going to the vet or my daughter's in the hospital or my mother's just go, send them some healing. Whether, whatever technique you use to do distance healing, use it. The more you heal, the better you'll be able to heal. And uh, at the beginning, it may not, you, you may not be able to tell. But when, when you've been doing it for a while, for instance, I use the Rune technique, Runevalder technique, I've had a, more than a dozen people come back to me and saying, you know, you, I called you and I asked you to help with the migraine and the migraine went away right after you did it. Well, that's convinced me that that works. And even if it didn't, would my saying a few odd syllables and waving my hands around hurt them in any way? No. So, uh, so it, it seems important to me that, that get better at it. And if you don't get better at it, you won't get better at it. That's kind of a boring thing to say. I'm just trying to get back, keep pounding on the same point. You've got to practice. And it's not an insult to the system to practice on something that isn't a huge spiritual thing. Um, if you have a teacup full of boiling water and you pour it in the ocean, it's not going to raise the temperature a whole lot. But if you have a teapot, full of water and you pour it into your bathtub, it'll probably bring the temperature up enough that you can tell. Given that, if you're going to practice and feedback helps, it's like if you are learning French and you turn in your papers every day and your teacher doesn't hand them back to the end of the semester, you don't find out what you got right and what you got wrong and you, without the feedback, it's, it's harder to work, to, to learn it the same way, do something that you can get feedback on. Do not try to do send energy out for world peace. Send energy to something really specific, something that you can do that is going to, that you'll be able to get some feedback on. Try for, I mean, Weather, local weather is, is usually a good thing. By and large, I don't believe in, it's, it's like love spells, you don't love spell. We don't mess around with large weather, weather patterns. But if you're just saying, could you hold off for a few minutes until I get the tent down in the car? That doesn't seem to me like it's going to disrupt the local farmer's ability to grow their crops. Um, and it, that you don't have to take your tent out and, and uh, spread it <laughs> in the yard to dry again when you get home. So go for something small. Whether, whether you're doing weather working, whether you're doing something there. I remember when I was young, <laughs> A psychic ability, we were trying to put a good strong veneer of, of science on it. And we used to make little things that were like a pinwheel in under a glass dome. You, usually it was just a glass. <laughs> and uh, on, on pin, you got a pin and then you got the uh, uh, piece of circle cut with flaps in it slightly. And you put it in, in there and you try and psychokinetically uh, make it spin because the, and give it a shot. I practiced when I was trying to learn biofeedback, taking my temperature and seeing if 15 minutes of my temperature is going up, it's going up to 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees. I, I'm sorry, I learned that technique so I could <laughs> skip tests I, wasn't, I hadn't studied for. 
but I got really, really good at adjusting my temperature. You go to the doctor and they, and they put the little clip on the end of your uh, finger to see how saturated your blood oxygen is or what your pulse is. Use it to, fig to, to, to learn to use your, your pulse down. And then the next step, once you have gotten used to being able to control your bodily functions, you can start saying, my, my joints are healing, my joints are getting stronger. Anything that's in there that hurts is going to dissipate and go away. The, the gout crystals, the, the uric acid is, uh, is melting and flowing away and I will no longer have gout. I use like my blood pressures, anything that's in my uh, veins is going to slowly clean itself out in a, in a safe way so that it doesn't leave clots flowing around in my bloodstream. You can start with the little things that you get an immediate feedback with and then start working on your whole body. If you don't ever do it, you won't ever do it. And Naki, you can tell by looking at me, no, I haven't found any magical way of losing weight. <laughs> I've tried two or three of them uh, so far. None of them has worked, but I'll keep trying. <laughs> As, you know, I, I much prefer anything that's safe, but. Uh, that's that. Okay, we're get, we've got four minutes left. I'm going to uh, take a minute and ask you all to uh, tell your friends about Changing Times, Changing Worlds, the conference that is, is coming up. We have now updated the uh, uh, page, that uh, the, the front page, so it's got next year's conference dates on it. It's You can... Uh, you can still buy all access to all the recorded uh, workshops from, from the 2020 conference. And next year is going to be uh, to be virtual again because we don't think that we will have complete immunity society wide by next November. It's gonna be November 8th to 14th uh, and um, Monday through Friday evenings and then Saturday and Sunday all day long. Uh, so the theme next year is going to be harvest and, and planting what you want to, uh, to harvest. So cool. Um, tell your friends, tell your friends about the YouTube channel where these Wednesday shows go on. Uh, and this is just a great place to, or go to the Facebook uh, group and, and go there. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing to, to uh, experience, to find a group of people where you don't have to uh, pretend that you don't believe in this stuff in order to, to take you seriously. <laughs> so, or, or maybe you are sitting at home and laughing at me, but I don't think so. I think you're doing it and saying, is there something? <laughs> is there something I can learn that make my practice better? If I can make it work better. And uh, the, point of this particular workshop was you got to practice as much as you hated learning your math facts as much as you hated memorizing whatever you had to memorize when you were a kid all the dates in history whatever you learn the basics and it makes everything easier once you get when you're trying to do something that's a lot more complicated and that's that this is your last chance to ask questions Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, and this is Chippecan. This is the Changing Times, Changing Worlds. Oh, if you have anything that you would like us to talk about, if you have anybody you'd like me to get on to, uh, to, to speak on the Wednesday shows, let us know uh, and we will chase them down. Um, maybe not as good at that as I would like to be, <laughs> but... Uh, let us, let us know if there's something you want to hear about. Good night, then. Uh, are we all good? We're good. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. You know, as they say, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay safe. Photobomb! <laughs>